you, Chair. I will I'll save my substantive debate around no grounds. I do have some, I will note I have some amendments on the notice paper. Uh, I would like to just take this opportunity to ask a few questions related to, to genuine grounds, uh, which is sort of building upon the, the removal of no grounds and then adding in genuine grounds and reasons why someone can be, why they can be evicted, essentially. The, during the, the, CMA, the CMERS, if I've got that acronym right, CMERS and DRIS. So CMERS did a, a survey uh, back in uh, 2018, uh, 2018, February to March 2009. So through the Bond Administrator conducted a survey of le le lessors and tenants at the time of the disposal of the security bond. Uh, the purpose of the survey was to get an understanding of which party was terminating the term tenancy agreement and which provisions of the RTA were being used. So there's a total of 23,445 uh, responses during that period. And the responses showed that only 418 terminations were, were used under the, the no grounds provision, which I believe equates to around 2%. So it is a, it is a very small number. So what, I'm, what I would like to understand for the purposes of this debate is, does the government have any more up-to-date data. I, I expect that between 2018 and 2024 that number hasn't changed all that much. There was a survey conducted by Make Rent and Fair Alliance which found that it is in the minority, the people that are being evicted through no grounds evictions. Uh, they also determined that a lot of landlords weren't aware of no grounds evictions. So it's only used in a very small number of cases. It doesn't play highly in the judgment or the decision making of most landlords, certainly in respect to if they're going to rent out their property on the, on the property market. And so what I'm trying to determine here is if the, if the government has any more up-to-date data on the number of no grounds evictions um, beyond uh, 2018, a more, a more relevant data set. Minister. No. Honourable Wilson Tucker. Thank you, Dr. Sheikh. Minister, can I ask why? I mean, this should be, this is a survey that's conducted by the, by the bond administrator, but I imagine this data is recorded. Uh, can you please elaborate if it is or is not recorded? Minister. It's not collected uh, on a regular basis, honourable member. There's no obligation for uh, lessors to tell the bond administrator the, the reason for uh, the termination or the reason uh, they are requesting that the bond be um, returned. Other than that, the lease has ended. They don't need to provide reasons. Honourable Wilson Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, look, that is disappointing, but I think we can determine from that 2% and the survey that's conducted recently um, that it is still a small number uh, of, of people that are being evicted through no grounds. So I'm still I'm confused as to why the government is, isn't entertaining removing it, um, but be that as it may, I just would like to point out that the C, the C RIS, uh, the, they conducted the impact analysis, they reviewed the uh, possible options around retaining no grounds evictions, removing no grounds evictions, uh, and there was another option B, so replace no grounds terminations with prescribed grounds for a, uh, for a lessor to terminate the tenancy agreement. And during that consultation process, they outlined the potential benefits, potential disadvantages. And for the, the, the summary or the crux of that, of that uh, survey and that result was they found that there wasn't any, there was no disconcernable disadvantages to the government. So they couldn't see any, any reason as to why no grounds, removing no grounds and changing them with genuine grounds was an issue in it and their, their analysis and their result was that it wouldn't affect the government at all. So my, my question is, Minister, what, what are the disadvantages and why, why didn't the government adopt that recommendation or that option and replace no grounds with genuine grounds? Minister. Thank you, Chair. I have answered that question. We had an extensive debate in Clause 1. I'm not repeating the arguments. The only additional point I would make, Honourable Member, is the series was pre-COVID. The investment market has changed, the residential market has changed, the world has changed post-COVID. 
Members, the question is that the words to be inserted be inserted. All those that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. no. I believe the noes have it. No. Members of the division being called, ring the bells. Members, uh, the question is that the words to be inserted be inserted. Members voting with the aye shall pass to the right of the chair. Members voting with the noes shall pass to the left of the chair. I appoint the Honourable Brad Pitt to tell her for the ayes, Honourable Peter Foster tell her for the noes, and before the tellers tell, I cast my, eye, my vote with the ayes. Members, the results of the, of the division are the ayes 3, the noes 27. I declare the result in the noes. Thank you, Acting Chair. I do have an amendment related to Clause 34 on the notice paper. Uh, I'm not planning on moving the amendment, I'm just putting on the record my opposition to the clause. Now, the amendment speaks to Section 64, which is related to no grounds evictions. There's a specifically around this clause. Uh, I'll, I'll deal with no grounds evictions concurrently with in later clauses, but for the purposes of this clause, it's really around the, the court uh, appeal process and extending out that, that length. I think it's around 60 days. So it's a technicality. It's, it's cleaning up the bill related to my, my general opposition uh, to no grounds evictions. So I would just like to, I won't move the amendment, I will just oppose, I just put on the record that I oppose this clause. Acting Chair. Minister, I would like to try and understand how often the Department of Communities is using no grounds evictions to evict people in public housing. I have asked some questions related to this previously, uh, but I haven't really got that, that far, to be honest. So, are you able to give this House uh, an update, some data on how often? within a, a year time frame the no grounds is used in, in, for public housing? Minister. Chair, no, I'm not the Minister for Communities, Honourable Members, so um, I, I don't have that information. The advisors with me are not from the Department of Communities. The Honourable Wilson Tucker. Thank you, Acting Chair. Minister, I think we'll be probably going through this bill for a little, little while longer. Are you able to take that on notice? Minister. Um, no, Honourable Member, there's another way that you can ask a question on notice. Um, or you can ask a question without some notice. I'm happy to give you an undertaking. I'll raise your question with the Minister, um, and if he wants to provide you with some information outside of this process, he will do that. I'll raise your concern with him, um, but I'm not able to provide that during the course of this debate. The Honourable Wilson Tucker. Uh, thank you, Acting Chair. Minister, I have asked a number of questions in this chamber. Uh, I believe one may be on notice, and I have been trying to go down this this wormhole to try and get a, get a number, um, but I keep getting a lot of bureaucratic answers back. Uh, so it has taken at least, well, two, three weeks, I would say, and I'm, I'm still, still hunting that number, and I think it is important to actually get some visibility here. Because if it's not used very often, it might even exonerate the government around their usage of, of no grounds evictions. Now, as I said, there are some usages where it probably is applicable for people in public housing, but I think we would all like to see some information here. Um, this debate, this bill is, is likely to continue for a, for a number of hours. If, we, if it continues beyond the dinner break, are you able to take that on notice and, and potentially raise that with the, the appropriate minister? Minister. Thanks, Chair. No, I've already given you an undertaking I'm not the Minister for Communities. I don't have the Minister for Communities here. I've given you a personal undertaking that outside of consideration of the bill, I will raise your concerns with the relevant minister and he can seek to provide you with the information as he sees fit. I won't be holding up the bill um, to get that and I don't have it available to me at the table. The Honourable Brad Pettit. So to follow up that question, which is a very good one by the Honourable Wilson Tucker. Um, certainly 
and I'll put this out, put this out there, and I'm happy for, the, for this to be continued. But the information that I have is that th over 30 per cent of evictions that this, that this government uses for public housing um, between over, but this is a, for the for the last for over a decade reporting period from 2013-14 to 21-22, over 30 per cent. So 1,264 people, families, including children, were evicted for no grounds from their public housing. Th over 30 per cent. Now, I'm, I'm putting that on the table from the evidence that I have, and if the minister wants to say that's wrong, it's not. But that certainly is the data that we've received from stakeholders. And I think it's a really important one. And this is actually why this amendment is significant, because the point, and that comes to the heart of the question, is that we are using no grounds evictions, not just on rare occasions, but we're using them very, almost a third of the time to evict people from, from social and public housing. And that's not good enough. That's why this amendment is so important. And I'll put to the Minister, if they think those numbers are wrong, I'm very happy to be corrected, but they're the best numbers I've got. Members, the question is the words to be inserted, be inserted. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. I think the noes have it. Members, we return to...